Observations of the sky became a subject of interest when optical telescopes were invented. With their help, Galilei and Kepler made the world understand the solar system according to the ideas of Copernicus, replacing old models of multiple geocentric moving spheres. William Herschel substantially improved optical telescopes at the beginning of the 19th century. He discovered the planet Uranus, initiated the modern classification of celestial objects, and defined the Julian date in astronomy still used today. One of the optical telescopes at the European Northern Observatory on the Canary Island of La Palma is named after this famous astronomer. Modern exploration of the sky uses, besides optical telescopes, also radio telescopes. Instruments carried by satellites and ground-based gamma-ray telescopes like MAGIC on La Palma. Together they give access to a wide spectrum of electromagnetic radiation. Gamma rays are the quanta of radiation at the high energy end of the electromagnetic spectrum. They are extremely energetic and invisible light. They can be observed only indirectly, using the remains of the absorption process in the Earth's atmosphere. When gamma rays encounter the atmosphere's molecules, they generate electron-positron pairs. These in turn interact with the atmosphere, creating gamma rays or photons of lower energy. The result of the repeated process is an air shower of an increasing number of particles of ever lower energy. Above a certain speed, these particles emit the characteristic so-called Cherenkov radiation, a consequence of charged particles moving faster than light does in the same medium. They produce extremely short flashes of visible bluish light, which can be observed with sufficiently sensitive detectors. The radiation is contained in a limited cone around the direction of the original gamma ray. Some of that radiation eventually hits the mirror of the magic telescope. It was only 1989 when the first source was discovered. And soon it became evident that the instruments of that time were not powerful enough, so a small international collaboration was formed to explore new ideas for a 17-meter telescope never tried before. And this construction incorporates a number of new ideas, such as the first use of carbon fiber tubes to make the telescope very light, new mirrors that could stand the harsh environment on mountains uh, without any protection, or light sensors that could even work during partial moonlight. The first MAGIC telescope was constructed between 2001 and 2003. All parts were contributed by the members of the MAGIC collaboration or their industrial partners. The same holds for the second telescope, operating since early 2009 near MAGIC 1. The total cost for the telescopes was of the order of 10 million euros, less than 10 cents per European taxpayer. Today, 21 institutes from nine countries participate in construction and operation, and more than 150 physicists are involved. Most of them come from Germany, Italy, Spain and Switzerland. This collaboration was able to build this telescope in, within only two years' time, and it turned out all these new ideas tried were successful and allowed us since then to collect a lot of interesting physics. The reflectors of the MAGIC telescopes are as large as financial constraints permit, to collect a maximum of light. The total surface of each reflector is 234 square meters, currently the largest worldwide. The mirror dishes are constructed of small elements. They are made of pre-formed and then diamond-milled aluminium plates coated with a thin quartz layer. This ensures maximum reflectivity and weather resistance. Together, the elements have the correct radius of curvature to form a parabola with a focus at 17 meters. In MAGIC 2, the mirror elements are one square meter each and are computer controlled individually to maintain optimal focusing. 
In Magic 1, the elements are squares of half a meter side length and four are grouped onto a panel for control. Demands on optical precision are not as strict as in optical telescopes because showers are comparatively extended objects at not very large distances. The mirror elements are mounted on a supporting structure four meters deep. The tubular structure is made of a composite of epoxy resin and carbon fiber joined by aluminium elements. This gives good rigidity for low weight. Minimal weight is necessary to quickly reorient the telescope for gamma ray bursts, the mysterious short-lived outbursts that are signaled occasionally by X-ray detectors on satellites. Up to now, they have not been detected in very high energy gamma rays. To counteract the rotation of the Earth, the entire moving assembly of mirrors and camera is arranged to rotate around a vertical and a horizontal axis, called an alt-azimuth mount. The total moving weight is 60 tons, the altitude moving weight only 10 tons. The motors are powerful enough to move the entire telescope to any point in the sky in less than 50 seconds. The Cherenkov light from a shower is focused onto a special camera functioning in principle like an ordinary digital camera. The camera has 576 pixels in Magic 1 in a hexagonal matrix and 1039 in a circular arrangement in Magic 2. In contrast to optical telescopes, these cameras do not make high demands on optical precision, but instead have to be extremely sensitive and permit exposures as short as possible for the faint signal. The shorter the time window of exposure, the better the residual light of the night sky can be suppressed. The projection of the Cherenkov light from a gamma ray appears as an elliptic image in the camera. The total sum of recorded light corresponds to the gamma ray's original energy. Each pixel also contains information about the light arrival time, with a precision of less than a nanosecond. The photo sensors presently used are the best available commercially. They contribute substantially to the cost. Efficiency of light recording is a critical parameter for gamma ray telescopes. The MAGIC collaboration, therefore, is developing together with industry more efficient sensors based on silicon. These semiconductors can, in principle, be made to be more sensitive than photomultipliers and have excellent time resolution. To cover large areas with many pixels and fast readout as needed for the MAGIC camera is still a challenge for industrial production. Signals from gamma rays last about 10 nanoseconds or, in other words, only one hundredth of one millionth of a second. They are decomposed into even shorter time slices of one nanosecond. This requires custom-made fast electronics. The signals of all pixels are transmitted in analog form via lightweight optical fibers to the control room. That way, the weight of the camera and the whole telescope is minimized. Fast electronics also contain a logic for triggering. To start the digital recording of an image requires a number of adjacent photosensors to record a signal above a certain threshold. Once that condition is satisfied, pixel currents are recorded in a computer in time slices of a nanosecond. Not only gamma rays satisfy the trigger conditions, unfortunately. Also, Cherenkov light from much more frequent energetic charge particles, the so-called cosmic rays, gets recorded. They are largely eliminated by algorithms in computers online and in later analysis. Even after this cleaning procedure, the observed signals contain some background events as noise. Their influence is estimated by comparing them to images taken in regions of the sky with no gamma ray source. The MAGIC telescopes today provide information on gamma rays from 30 giga electron volts up, an energy range not observable before. They can also observe the short-lived gamma ray bursts. Many new results are due to courageous technical innovations. The MAGIC telescopes and their analysis methods are in permanent development. New performance improvements can be expected every year.